From EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies. An informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting, LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Thank you, Jim. As always, for the introduction, this is another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 16th. Good morning. We have, uh, before we start into the long-range outlook like we normally do, we're going to start off with the what's going on currently, and we have uh, some sleet, sleet freezing rain, mainly freezing rain uh, across the far northern areas, and I think these are the areas we're going to get into it today with that freezing rain. This is now looking, this image is looking at uh, at 3 p.m., Sunday 3 p.m., so uh, I think you're going to get into the, the, the uh, accumulations in these areas. You can look on our weather alerts page. We have a detailed breakdown of the uh, isocrural. Uh, as you get later in the day, though, you, as before this pulls away and ends, you could have a brief mix with snow further south of that circled area, too, but I don't think it's significant. The area's accumulations will be up in these areas. So you can go into our uh, weather alerts page, take a look at that, and uh, we'll have our latest information with that. And also, uh, I, here's the current radar here, and a lot of you are like, well, I don't really know anything going on. I got sleep freezing rain up in these areas, but... Uh, just rain over here, nothing in the middle. Uh, this is just a lull, don't worry, it's filling in. I'm not going to get gypped here. I mean, we have plenty of rain overnight. This is just a break in between, another wave coming in behind it. So uh, we're going to have uh, some more scattered showers today. Not so much heavy rain, just scattered showers, nuisance going on pretty much most of the day and wrapping up this evening. Okay, so let's get into the long range now. We have some changes here, and I'm going to be some people grumbling here, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So we do these long range outlooks, and you're doing... You know, uh, weeks one and two, it's a lot easier than doing weeks three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're going out further in time. Things are a little variable, and you're trying to hope things start timed correctly. Uh, we are going to get colder. We are going to get uh, into the snowier pattern. That is coming. It is inevitable. Uh, winter is not over. I've seen ridiculous comments all over Twitter. It, 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 it's insane. And I understand a lot of people... Uh, aren't educated and versed in this kind of thing. And you got a lot of people that follow the models and... Well, the models show it, so that's the way it is. No, it's not, it doesn't work like that. Okay, if I, I made a career, <clears throat> made a career for myself going against the models. Uh, you can't just go with what the models have. Sometimes, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, and you know, sometimes they're right for the wrong reasons or wrong for the right <laughs> right reasons. So, there's a lot of different things that go into them, and you have to understand what's going on, not just with models but observations. So, observationally, it looked like we are going to go into a colder period. Uh, the last week of December, and head right into January. Well, that's coming, just not that quickly. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, you go into early January, we're going to change this too. Going into early January, first couple of days of January might be milder than average, but keep in mind this is the coldest time of the year, and anything slightly above average is still kind of 40-ish. Not really, you know, and it's not a blowtorch. We're not talking about warm, really warm temperatures here, but warmer than average. And it's climatologically the coldest time of year, so, you know, if normal highs are in the mid-30s and you're 40 instead, eh, still cold. Uh, but not cold, not, not cold enough to promote the uh, snow threat, so we're going to take away that, uh, that, that storm signal, which is right here, this, this uh, winter storm signal between the 24th and 30th. Could there be a little weak system moving through there, like right around Christmas? Yes, maybe. We'll see. Uh, don't get excited. Uh, of course, we have the... Ongoing rain, snow, ice event today, and then we have another rain system coming in here toward the end of next week. That will be rain, too, because it's coming at a time when we're expecting temperatures to be slightly above average. Now, this change here is is, is a lot has a lot of things to do with uh, the Matt and Julian oscillation. Here's one of them. Um, the, the, the milder phases, and I'll get into that in a second. Uh, the, the best forcings out here in the eastern Indian Ocean kind of come into the uh, the, the maritime continent. This is not, when, when you're the best convection along, along the equator, which is right here, uh, taking a look at the world on, on a flat piece of paper here. No, the world is not flat. I, I keep saying it every single time because I always get somebody that says, oh, see, I told you, he said the world is flat. Nope. This is just showing the world what it would look like on a flat piece of paper. So the best convection here is out here in the ocean. There's actually a tropical cyclone uh, sitting out here, however you say that, uh, but that's where it is. It's sitting right over uh, uh, the eastern, uh, just east of, of, of India, moving to the northwest. And once that gets out of there, the best convection will shift to this area here, Indonesia. Uh, so uh, up in these areas, the maritime continent, this, that's this region right here. 
Okay, and what that effect does, uh, if you look at a typical phase, well, we're now in phase four. If you're in phase four and phase five, which are right in these areas, that's where it's expected to be through the end of the month. Phase four is warm, phase five is warm, phase three is kind of like in between, it's where we just were. Phase four, phase five, those are warm phases. And then uh, these are, this is off the EPS weeklies, has a continuing to phase six, phase seven. Well, you get to phase six and seven, it gets a little bit better. Actually, phase seven gets a, a lot better than this is indicating here. This is just a broad paintbrush. And in El Nino, it's actually a cold pattern. This is what you want to see. So we get to phase seven, it won't be until the second week of January. So eventually, something's going to give regardless, whether you're going to have any any help from the stratosphere and it comes early, or if you just rely on the on the Madden-Julian oscillation to cycle through and propagate eastward into the more favorable phases and colder phases of the Western Pacific. One thing is going to is going to change one thing or another. Okay, so it's it's coming, but uh, we've been talking about the the, the 2000. 14 2015 winter analog as being the number one analog and uh look folks this is this is almost exactly how november turned out this year this is november 2014 i can almost take this and, and duplicate it not quite because no two years were exactly alike but it was pretty darn close november 2014 all right this is how december 2014 turned out it was above average uh, a, lot of, a lot of the country's gonna look like this 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 the december also i got news for you okay so this is this is December 2014, and uh, we're headed there. So this isn't any, any surprise uh, that we're going in this direction because if you look at, uh, this is going to be a really 2014-2015 uh, winter uh, kind of weighted here in this in this outlook here. Uh, but uh, the sea surface temperature anomalies, very similar to what they were in December, very similar. Take a look at this. This is where your, your warmest temperatures are still at Nino uh, 3, 3.4, and 4. That's from these regions right here. Uh, not quite as warm over here in the, uh, just off the Peruvian coast. And no, we're not worried about anything south of the equator. No, it's warmer south. That has nothing to do with uh, with the El Nino that we're looking at. We're looking at the 0 to 5 degrees north, of uh, which is which is this side. Okay. Uh, very warm PDO still. That's going to help us down the road. Keep that in the back of your mind. All right, this is not going to help us now. I read, when we were talking about these in the video, in the videos of the last couple of weeks, if you've been following along, this, I said, would help us down the road with a negative EPO January beyond. Still the case. Just keep an eye on this, okay? That's what happened in 2014 also. But take a look at this configuration. Just to see, just do a mental snapshot here. These warmer temperatures are, uh, they are these, these warmer colors of, of orange and, and red are above average sea surface temperature anomalies. Anything in blue is below average. Okay, watch this. This is December 2014. Wow, pretty close. Pretty close. Almost the same configuration here. You got this, and that's current, and here's 2014. Wow, December 2014. So, I mean, as far as from a sea surface temperature perspective, it's almost identical, and we like to you see surface temperature because this really largely controls what how our climate behaves uh you know how our how our seasons behave based on sea surface temperature this really drives the climate so there's so much focus on just the sea surface temperatures but also how things transpired and it's, it's not no surprise that this is how this is how uh, november worked out and this is how december is going to be working out when we went to january though look what happened started getting the epo influence and we got at least in the northeast united states started getting colder Warming up on the west coast, a, a positive, uh, positive uh, plus PNA over here, They're ridging in the western United States, and that continued right into February. Got really brutal in February, big deep trough in the east in February, brutal. Okay, we also have a stratospheric warming split that helped, uh, kind of arrived right around this time, mid December in 2014, and uh, that split vortex actually helped to get very cold in the month of January, and it kind of flipped like a switch. So you know, I, I don't see anything to and we have, a, we have one ongoing forecasted right now to happen. It's actually on, ongoing now, and it's, and, it's, and it's just a question of whether it splits or displaces the stratospheric polar vortex. Uh, but we have one ongoing right now at the same time. And 2014, December, did the same thing. So I, I don't see anything. It's amazing how close. It's actually scary close how, how, how close the 2014-2015 winter is to this year, at least thus far.
All right, so I'm going to keep on that as being the number one analog by far. Now, a lot of people went 2002, 2003. Uh, actually, truth be told, so did we early because we released this in early December or uh, November. But this is definitely taking the lead. All right, definitely. Without question, it's taking the lead. So here's the milder periods expected. This is pre-Christmas. We have actually before, you know, let's go through about the 23rd. We have a milder period coming in. We'll have a transient cooler shot near Christmas. Christmas Eve, Christmas, it gets cooler, all right, slightly cooler than average. And you might even have like a little weak wave moving through here and give me a, uh, a little Christmas miracle there. Not, not a big deal. Not, not a showstopper, folks, so don't worry about travel and all that stuff here i'm not worried about anything big here happening in that time frame and a storm signal of course when we say storm signal i'm not talking about like a nuisance clipper i'm talking about something that's going to produce you know four five six eight ten twelve inches of snow or more storm signals removed for that time frame for the last week of december it's coming it's just delayed okay so just persevere so here's that here's that week in between uh, Christmas and uh, and New Year's. It is going to turn milder. You're going to have some milder periods in here. The cold is not coming yet, but I do think it's coming. All right. Just like in 2014, well, actually 2015, because it was January. 2015. January 2015, I pulled up some several stations for this, for this region, and it looks like through about the fourth or fifth of the month, it was above average. Uh, we had some great, we actually went from you know, temperatures in the 50s on, I believe it was the 4th of January. And two days later, the highs were in the lower 20s, upper teens and lower 20s. Highs. So, I mean, it went from one extreme to another. And I think you're going to see that kind of flip of the switch. And that could be aided by stratospheric warming. Uh, we talked about this in the last couple of videos just to give you a quick recap. This is actually showing a split here. Split. Uh, whether this happens like this or not, we'll see. This is at the... 10 millibar level so you're going up now 10 millibars is about uh, right around right around 100,000 feet above the ground so this is way up there in the atmosphere and this uh, this is in this in the stratosphere this is above the ozone layer all right so what you have is you have some int intense warming going on over the polar regions and that compresses the air downward okay so it's not really heating per se it's compressing so by compressing it's pushing the once it comes to it, it pushes downward over to down in the in uh, in altitude down toward the troposphere where we live. It's pushing the cold air that's at locked to the polar regions. Typically, obviously, it's cold to the North Pole, South Pole. Everybody knows that. You're pushing that that cold air away from the poles and displacing it somewhere in North America away from the poles. And it's choosing to push it over Asia and North America and uh, in North America here. So it's pushing it away from those regions and this is the 10 millibar level again this is 100,000 feet up so this is like our oh, lots way up there it's gonna take a while to get down here and this is looking at um, this yeah this is looking to 10 millibar level if we go to the 50 millibar level this is going down a little bit to 65,000 feet above the uh, above the surface now this is still in the stratosphere it's a lower stratosphere though just below the ozone layer okay so it's getting close to the troposphere which starts at about Oh, God, it's been a while. I think 33,000 feet or something like that. All right, so stratosphere goes all the way up from, you know, between, you know, six and a half to 31 miles. It goes way up, okay? Uh, so at this level, 50 millibars, which is about 65,000 feet up above the above the ground, uh, which is about 12, 13 miles, okay? Uh, this is where it's showing... Is showing the cold air coming into that level. So it's giving me an indication. Now, this is New Year's Eve. I still don't think it gets down to the troposphere by then. So we're going we're gonna to extend that period of near to slightly above average temperatures the last week of, of December. Nothing brutally warm, so don't worry about that. It's just delayed. It's just like 2014 was. you know. And then we go into uh, the beginning of, of January 2015. Might start off mild for the first couple of days or maybe in the first week. Okay? There's no guarantee. If anybody tells you they know exactly how these stratospheric warming events are going to work out, uh, they're full of it. All right. But come hell or high water, <clears throat> as my dad used to say when he used that word, come hell or high water, even if that stratospheric thing doesn't work out, you still have a propagation eastward in the, into more favorable uh, Madden-Julian oscillation cycles come the second week of January. So I think one way or the other, we're going to get there. Uh, this, this stratospheric warming can help you get there faster. Maybe. 
uh, or it can make one once we get into the into the colder phases the managed only oscillation and you couple it with this you go from just getting colder to being brutal hopefully we don't get there i really don't want brutal cold okay uh chance for a christmas clipper yes it's still there i wouldn't get too excited about it. this is the lightest um lightest coloring of shading of, of snow here that is, is on the intensity chart so might be just a little bit weak clipper moving through here christmas eve christmas day give you a few snow showers maybe uh gfs was showing us the last couple days i wouldn't get too excited about this either uh but uh you know going back to the 2014 thing i'll tell you what uh yeah looking back at uh i had nothing better to do i looked at looked back in the facebook posts going all the way back to 2014 it takes you a while because you got to scroll through scroll through scroll through and it waits to load before you can scroll through so it took me a long time to go all the way back there and actually had to do it through uh, finding a picture of something from 2014 just so i can get to that general area of the facebook page and i went back to this this time frame in december and people were uh were about to lose it winter cancel uh you guys hype winter for nothing it's not going to be anything and uh you know it's a joke we haven't had any snow because we by the time we got to we had some snow and, and it's funny in 2014 we had a snowfall before thanksgiving shocker no, it was just before thanksgiving but whatever we had a snowfall a significant snowfall across this region and barely anything barely anything in december and then we went to january big uptick so i went back to december 2014 just to see what the people were saying and it was amazing how we were, you know, we're getting slammed and attacked. I can't believe you guys thought we were going to have an above average winter. What a joke. It's going to be like 2011 where we had a snowfall in October. You don't see any snow the rest of the year. And we turned it, you know, we, we didn't engage with it. We turned it off. You know, I didn't, I didn't even bother. Uh, it was good that our, our staff didn't engage. Well, we had a couple moderators at that time that uh, were a little ban happy and stuff. I, maybe they deleted stuff. I, I don't know. But the stuff I saw on there was very anti-snow anti-winter and you know, down in the dumps and everything just relax folks because 2014 2015 that winter turned around quite nicely and we had a tremendous amount of snow well about at least 150 percent of average pretty much region-wide so just relax you know we have plenty of time for snow not even winter yet i know it's meteorological winter but it's winter doesn't start for a couple days yet uh it's going to start off first week or two not a lot not a lot of in the chances of the snow department but after that point i think we pick up a little bit and we'll watch for this little thing i don't think it's gonna be much of anything but we'll just hope and you can cheer this on for maybe you know quick dusting or something maybe see some snowflakes flying at christmas eve who knows uh largely milder than average temperatures fall from now before are from now through just before christmas then the late wheat six week system that comes in late next week will come in at a time when milder air is in place so likely that is rage, uh, rain region wide can't read this morning boy and then we're changing the last week of december to near to slightly above average temperatures and removing the winter storm signal so we are going to remove it for now i think we're on another winter storm signal coming back into play in january it's too far out for me to sit there and try to figure out a time frame right now uh but this right now is uh the winter storm signal we're going to take off the table for now if that comes back great uh but right now it doesn't look like this near to slightly below average period is going to work out uh, they were going near to slightly above average maybe just slightly above and then maybe going into the first week of uh, of January also. Sometime during that week, between the 1st and 7th, is when this changes, I believe. Uh, so everything's just delayed. It's pushed back a little bit. And uh, again, the stratosphere thing maybe was, was supposed to happen a little bit quicker. Not happening as quick. So that's not going to save us by the by the time frame we wanted it to or thought was, thought it was going to. Again, trying to pace. Anybody tells you they know this, how the stratosphere is going to work out uh, is full of it. I've seen uh people with doctorates uh that specialize in the stratosphere doctorates in meteorology that specialize in stratospheric dynamics and they're telling us at day 10 10 days away something that's predicting 10 days away cannot be trusted and it's still a guess okay models are still guessing just like they do here in our weather here down at the surface they guess with the stratosphere too all right so we don't know always when it just because it says it's coming in 10 days 14 days how does that down well how long does it take what part of the world does it go to these are all things that we are wait and see type things and uh, anybody that tells you different that they know what it's going to do uh is full of it but like i said hey if this doesn't work out it doesn't matter because you're going to have the favorable uh matt and julian oscillation colder phases coming into play once we get toward the get into the second week of january so come hell or high water it's coming 
I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 17th, or excuse me, December 16th. Uh, also, if you have not checked out our public services, or sorry, me, our premium services for My Pocket Meteorologist, text alerts and premium forum, please click, click on the image below this video. It will take you right to that page and give you more information on how to sign up for that. Again, we are expecting to stay very active here in the month of January. Might not be through the end of this month, but it's coming, folks. So do, please do check that out. Uh, we'll have our, our advanced discussions of the premium forum that are not released publicly where we discuss these winter storm threats in advance. Okay, I'll see you again next week. Take care.